unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Hey, no, Max. Hey, Max. No, no smoke. Gennady Golovkin. Hey, hey, guys. He wants no smoke with Canelo next. Well, at least according to his trainer. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego. And I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang, gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash app, in the patreon family we working now i revamped the patreon head over there sign up for the new patreon we're shifting some of the content from the channel over there and um yeah we're going to build that community also you could become a youtube channel member hit the join button that's a great way to support the channel another way to support the channel is to click on the link in the description box and get the espn plus bundle that includes espn plus hulu and disney plus all three of those apps one price 12.99 and those efforts go to help the channel and also provide you with some content during this lockdown now let's get it golovkin's new trainer as you guys know he sacked abel sanchez i got a video coming out about that and basically jonathan banks says that he didn't want Golovkin, you know, after this pandemic ends to go into straight into a Canelo fight. He said that wasn't the game plan. So that's not what they're having. This is what he said. His exact quote in an interview link in the description. He says when, you know, when he was asked about a potential September Canelo fight, he says, no, they called me about it. And I said, no. The plan was for Golovkin to get a fight versus Camille says Meta, Golovkin's mandatory, and then get another fight and then fight Canelo Alvarez. So he says, when we went to Canelo and said, we're ready, Canelo said, no, I don't want to fight. And he disappeared and he went and did whatever he wanted to do and he refused to fight. He says, so now with the trilogy, now he's saying, okay, I'm ready. Now Canelo's saying, okay, I'm ready. After this, let's do it. So Golovkin's like, no, I already have something planned. I'm fighting my mandatory. Camille says meta. Then he goes on to say, if you want to do this, let Golovkin get this fight out the way. Then if everything is still a go, then let's come together. Wow. Wow wow um this is weird this is weird this is like freaky friday you know we went from Gennady golovkin i don't know the exact year let's say 2017 18 you know and he was like hunting canelo down and that was the fight and then canelo beat Cotto, so it was like okay canelo gotta fight him and it was, it was like triple g was doing all the work to really try to make the fight and pressuring then canelo gave up his belt in 2018 you know they were supposed to fight a voluntary defense this is what they told the wbc you know i reported about all this this is the great thing about um new medium and my tenure in this game is i literally i'm not i'm literally the boxing encyclopedia because the work goes through me i don't have this team as like other people uploading videos or teams sending people to you know a bunch of fights and stuff like that so my experience every ounce of work i had my hands involved in it you know what i'm saying so i reported the stories you get what i'm saying i reported it so it sticks with you when you do it there because i did it the old-fashioned way my channel is popular based on great fans and the efforts we put in you know so I remember all this. The WBC, I did a video about it way back when, in 2017, 18, whatever it was. I think it was December of 2017, if memory serves correctly. You guys could Google. I, I can't wait for you guys to try to show me up in the comment section and fact check me. Let's go. I'm ready for the smoke. So anyway, Golovkin 
was the WBC mandatory, and Canelo had beaten Cotto. Cotto was supposed to fight Golovkin, but then Canelo, in beating Cotto, he inherited those problems. Then Triple G was pushing for the fight. Him and Abel Sanchez and Tom Loeffler, they wanted to fight Canelo. Canelo was still fighting at 54, 55, Canelo weight or whatever. And that's where he fought He fought Cotto at this weird weight, you know, not technically middleweight, but really not 160. And the bottom line is they all met up with the WBC and they decided at that time that, okay, enough's enough. This is your mandatory. You got one voluntary fight. Golovkin gets one voluntary fight. And then after you guys are supposed to fight. So Canelo chose for Cinco de Mayo. He was the first boxing event. My memory is crazy. And I also went to that fight too. credential media covered Canelo Khan. It was actually more people than I thought that was going to be there. But anyway, he was the first fight. My memory is insane. People, it was the first boxing fight. There was a UFC fight, but it was the first boxing fight to open the T-Mobile arena. Canelo chose Amir Khan. God knows why. I know why, but you know what I'm saying? It wasn't really a desire fight. And then Golovkin fought his mandatory, which was Dominique Wade, in April. And I went to that fight, too. Credential media for that. Golovkin knocked out Wade in two rounds. And then Canelo destroyed Amir Khan. I thought, I thought Khan did well for the first four rounds. But then, you know, we knew what was going to happen. So after that, they were supposed to meet in September. They both had blew through their voluntaries and knocked them out. Golovkin even got in the ring after the Khan fight, after he stretched Khan. And, you know, it was like all the fans' excitement were there. And then Canelo was getting sued by his promoter from Mexico, All-Star Boxing. And he was in Miami or something dealing with legal proceedings because basically All-Star Boxing, his promoter, says he brought Canelo to America and started shopping him around and Golden Boy basically stole him. But it was Canelo who was under contract, so Golden Boy was dropped from the lawsuit. You see what I'm saying? I tell you, my memory is crazy because I report about all this stuff, so I remember it. So anyway, Canelo used that as a cop-out, and then Canelo basically said that... I'm just giving you guys a history lesson, just because today I got time, cuz. You know, Canelo was going through this lawsuit, so he used it as an excuse and said, oh, I'm not fighting Golovkin, just take the belt. You know, I got other stuff I'm dealing with, and... You know, I'm not going to be met by someone else's demands and this, that, and the third. So Canelo became almost a laughing stock. People were like, oh, you don't want to fight Golovkin because Golovkin was really pushing the issue. Like, hey, no, guys, and give me my belts, everybody. <laughs> you know, doing all this stuff in interviews. So I gave you guys the chronological history. To I said that to say this. It's crazy to now see, fast forward, out of all that stuff Golovkin did, to try to get Canelo, then you you draw with Canelo, then you scream, oh, I was robbed, and everybody knows I beat Canelo, and Abel Sanchez was complaining about Canelo's gloves and stuff, and Golovkin was supposed to be the guy to beat Canelo, according to them, and you know what the funny thing is? All this hype that Golovkin got, and he did worse than Mayweather, and Mayweather's smaller than Canelo. Golovkin is bigger than Canelo, with supposed to be deadly power and Mayweather easily beat Canelo and it was not even anything you could debate it's not debatable the Mayweather Canelo Mayweather Canelo is not debatable at all unless you're CJ Ross or drunk Golovkin Canelo can be debated you know I personally thought Golovkin should have etched it out but you know Canelo did good early and it was making Golovkin look bad and miss and stuff but anyway we've come a long way because now after all that stuff we finally get to fight then you know canelo true mexican and golovkin claiming this mexican style bs and stuff with abel and then canelo walked you down in the second fight and was tagging you up and it looked like golovkin was about to get stopped y'all in the first eight rounds it looked like it was looking bad for him but Canelo not having the best stamina, getting tired, having to, you know, to work for it because Golovkin's tough, you know, and he knows how to survive and, you know, jab and stuff like that. So 
Canelo got tired, and then Golovkin made the fight interesting in the latter rounds, you know, because he hurt Canelo and, and things like that. Canelo had to eat some shots, things like that. So, with that being said, it, we've come a long way, people. Now, it's so bad that Golovkin is trying to postpone a Canelo fight. That, I mean, this is just crazy. That's why they say boxing is the theater of the unknown. We went from the hunter being the hunted now canelo because canelo i'm telling you canelo's team they're 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 methodical and what they've decided to do is make sure they win the third fight and win it convincingly so what they did is they knew golovkin time wasn't on his side so he got aged out a little bit canelo had this little facade going on last year saying oh i'll never fight golovkin and he doesn't represent a challenge. I don't want to fight him. But as soon as Golovkin looked pretty horrible versus Dariochenko and really shouldn't be a champion because he didn't beat Dariochenko, now Canelo's team is like, boom, we got action. Golovkin next, just like Kovalev. Kovalev almost got stopped by Anthony Yard. And then who fights him next? Canelo, you know? So Golovkin clearly looks like he's on the back half of his career He's 38 years old. He just had a birthday. And it's crazy to see how the tables have turned. Now everything fa I really don't even want to see this fight like that. It's gonna be it's gonna be ugly because Canelo won, he might bully Golovkin because Golovkin's more desperate for the 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 payoff and the payday and stuff like that than Canelo. And redemption or whatever because canelo won the second fight one so golovkin may even have to bite down and and eat some like fight at a catch weight fight at 168 fight with the rehydration clause or something that they could put in the contract we don't know but beyond that the ball is in canelo's court bro that's just what it is golovkin looked shot in his last fight You've heard myself say it. Then I've later heard people like Teddy Atlas say, yo, Golovkin didn't look good. Derevinchenko really beat him. And then now, you know, he's ripe for the picking. And, and Canelo wants to probably end the trilogy in style. And now you have his own trainer who's basically saying, we don't even want to fight Canelo for, we don't want to fight him next. We want tune-up fights, you know, preferably two, but at least you got to give us one. And we want to fight Camille says Meta, his mandatory, <laughs> a guy with 21 fights and five knockouts. Bro, Golovkin is not, I'm telling you, this is funny. This is all that old media, all that shoot him up shit. Y'all be talking. <laughs> you got to do something, baby. This is looking bad for Golovkin, bro, because Golovkin, the, the mythical dragon, he needs a tune up. Like, I thought he wanted Canelo and Redemption. This, man, this, I told you, this is going to be one of old media's worst years. I already see him, like, in terms of just the boxing world. Old media, people are struggling to write articles, struggling to do, like, YouTube videos and stuff because people don't have, you know, exclusives and vlog, you know. They don't have exclusives and weigh-ins and press conferences and, you know, meetups and stuff. So people are scrambling. You see a lot of people because I think – during a pandemic like this, you, you get to see who's absolute and absolutely necessary to to move in boxing and, you know, things like that. But it's looking bad because listen to what everything old media said. They said Golovkin was the it guy. They said he was super popular. These things were proven false. He's not super pop. I mean, I'm not saying he's not popular at all. But what I'm saying is they made him like he's a global, massive star household name type of. That's how HBO and everybody build him up in old media. You know, people wearing Mexicans for Golovkin sh shirts and saying Mexican style and all this stuff because it was cool or they thought it was cool to be a culture vulture and, um, you know, try to jump and be a part of something you're not, which is the lovely Mexican heritage. And none of that was true. You had opportunities to fight David Lemieux Mexican style, a vicious puncher, and you didn't. You fought him in a style to safety first jab stuff like that you canelo was walking you down and where was that mexican style dariovchenko was was in that ass where was the mexican style danny jacobs was like punching golovkin in the face and then flexing and like yeah like 
all hyped up and geeked up where was the mexican style so all this stuff really wasn't true and i do think golovkin's a good fighter but what old media built him as that part we know now for a fact is not true and i think this is more evidence his trainer his new trainer some people said he should have stayed with abel you know i don't know what you guys feel let me know in the comment section but his trainer is basically saying we need more time you know we know what that means when when camp say that freddie roach said oh terrence crawford he's really quick and and freddie roach knows because he, he's known terrence crawford for a while he's seen him for a while and he had a fighter victor postal at the time that fought terrence crawford and crawford whooped his ass and then when it came to him and pacquiao he said pacquiao needed a tune-up and you know all this and that and crawford got to do more i mean we know the moves we know the posturing and boxing canelo got the juice now man because golovkin wants tune-ups he got kicked out the snack pro program he's he's really out of sight out of mind i ain't really heard from nothing from him and now his trainers on record admitting like hey guess what we're not gonna let canelo dictate to us you know all this crying about and see this is the thing old media did all this crying and saying like oh man golovkin was robbed and everybody at press row felt golovkin won the first and second fight but why don't golovkin want to go in september if the world and the economy is open back up or closed you know closed circuit type um events or however boxing comes back why is golovkin's team now saying oh no we need more time and we got to go through camille says meta what what part of the game is this like errol spence got in a fucking accident flew out of vehicle he flew out of vehicle and wants top names straight away he wants to fight Manny Pacquiao and Danny and all these people straight out the out the car stuff. But Golovkin, age 38, resume is boo-boo, never really shows separation from anybody. He's saying the guy, his nemesis or his contemporary or whatever, him and his team are saying we need more time and we need to go through a Polish fighter that nobody's ever heard of with no knockout power, Camille says meta for before canelo they must know they must know that golovkin is shot or he hasn't adapted to jonathan banks's style or he's not looking the same i don't know they know something because this is crazy that you insisted on oh canelo i got robbed twice and i beat him both times and now all of a sudden after all that hooting and hollering you ain't even ready for canelo and everybody's on the same page because we're in a pandemic so whatever your layoff is is going to be similar to canelo's layoff it's not like canelo fought in february right it's not like canelo fought in february and golovkin ain't fought since last year so the pandemic has put everyone kind of on the same page canelo fought in november of last year the first week of november and golovkin fought late october and then it's been a pandemic you know from march to now so whatever your amount of time to rest that's how much canelo has had look it up canelo look at when canelo because i remember the zone promoting it you know it was the golovkin dervinchenko late october around halloween and then a week later or whatever it was um it was the the canelo fight with kovalev so you guys both fought so i remember distinctly golovkin fought in october it might have been the first week of october or whatever and then canelo fought within a month later because actually canelo kovalev was competing against ufc 244 jorge masvidal and nate diaz and canelo of mexican heritage fought at the end of an observed holiday in mexico on dia de los muertos so at the end of the day i know they fought a month apart because like i said canelo fought on day of the dead and competing against jorge masvidal and nate diaz so you canelo and golovkin have had the same opportunity to rest and about the same amount of time off actually golovkin has had an extra month than canelo so now all of a sudden golovkin don't want to fight canelo straight away he would rather actually go through with this i mean it's just a bad look it's a bad look for for golovkin because even anthony joshua let him tell it he's saying he he wishes q brad Pulev could step aside so he could fight tyson fury whether that's true or not at least he's saying it but you have golovkin's team and they're saying no nah, we want to fight this guy 
that's an unheralded guy, not a big name in America. So they basically, to me, that stipulates you're not really ready for Canelo. Canelo just knocked out Kovalev, so you know he's super dangerous, and you don't want to go straight into that. So the tables have turned majorly. Um, it's looking crazy for DAZN. They have no content. I'm sure they lost a lot of subscribers during this this lockdown and pandemic because they have no new fresh content and the bit of content i guess that they do have they're putting it on youtube for free so that, what is the reason to to pay for it but beyond that it's just weird desperate decisions from the zone business decisions when it pertains to the boxing side because golovkin had like a i don't remember the exact amount of fights but he had a, a pretty lengthy amount of fights with equity in the zone for signing to DAZN rather than going to ESPN or going to PBC. So you gave him equity and you gave him, you know, all this leverage and crazy pay with a long contract, not like, okay, two fights and then we'll see how it's going and we could opt out or whatever. You gave him a long contract and he's already looking faded within his second fight versus Derek Vinchenko, really even in his first fight with DAZN against Steve Rose. I thought he was getting tagged, you know, considering that it was at a catch weight. Steve Rose fought at 168 and they fought at a catch weight at like 164 or something like that. So all things considered who Steve Rose was, his limited amount of experience at the high level, Golovkin looked pretty bad even in that fight, even though he got the knockout. But the Derevchenko, his second fight, he definitely looked bad. Now, DAZN, you know, when this pandemic is over or whatever, they got to try to sell, according to Golovkin's team, Triple G still going after says Meta, you know, an unknown guy with no knockout power instead of going straight into a Canelo fight. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. But it does sound like a lack of confidence in um, Golovkin's team. Maybe maybe it's because Golovkin didn't want to pay Abel or whatever reason they split up. And maybe Jonathan Banks feels he has to spend some more time or you know it's probably a culmination of things you know just they've only had two fights together but another reason that has to be it is his fight with Daryevchenko. you know that this is more this is more man new media we're having a phenomenal year this is more vindication of what i've been saying i keep telling you that Daryevchenko really should have won that fight and this is the actions not of somebody who knows that they whoop Derevchenko, but someone who feels that they have more work to do and they didn't look so too hot to trot. Because if you really felt that, you know, all the cries for controversy and the people like me who said the Derevchenko fight wasn't, you know, a robbery or whatever, then why wouldn't you fight Canelo straight away? You look so great in the Derevchenko, which you need a tune up for. Like I said, everybody's on a pandemic. Everybody's on a rest right now. So why do you need extra time to get ready when you've had an extra month to to rest up that Canelo didn't have? And Canelo fought at 175, whereas Golovkin just fought at 160 where he's been fighting and struggled. Man, it's a bad look. I don't I don't want to I mean, I don't even really care about the Canelo Triple G fight like that. I really don't because these aren't all these are all bad signs to me. And. Just call me Mr. I told you so, because this is exactly what I told you. I told you I didn't really want to see this fight, and these are more indications of why I don't want to see the fight. It doesn't look like it's going to be the same fight. You know, they they should have already fought by now a third time because it's, Triple G is not looking like the same desire and hunger or whatever you want to call it in his team, his new team or whatever. It's not sounding like the most confident going in there with Canelo. So why would I want to see it, you know? go to AT&T and then try to make it look like it's this epic thing and it's going to be a predictable outcome. I really believe that. We unpack coming to you live. Let me know how you guys think I did. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Golovkin, does he want smoke? It don't sound like it to me. Let me know how I did. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. <music>